We are good to go. Okay. So good morning, everybody. It's uh, Friday 15 and we are at the beginning of the second half of the year and the year is going by like in few minutes. So the slaughterhouse of failure is not in our destiny. We will persevere, we will persist until we succeed of well, Medina little modified. So yesterday, by total coincidence, um, Dan received some, got some information, um, and my wife, Kari, got the same uh, CDC, which he's pulling up now on the screen. And Kari, my wife, texted me at like 10 o'clock in the morning, and she said, look at this. She said, there's another reason to go and live in Italy. Because we just came back from vacation and from, from Italy. If we were there close to a month, three weeks. And she said, look at this. And if you look at the statistic, this is horrendous. Horrendous. Dan, if you want to comment on that, because I've got a lot to say about this too. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean these statistics are from 1970 to 2018. So in 50 years, everybody else is trending uh, to spending less money and increasing longevity where we're spending more money per capita and decreasing our life expectancy for the first time in you know 50 years, our life expectancy and here in the US is actually decreasing. So we all on this call have something you know to worry about and, and you know we're in a business where we can not only help ourselves, but we can help others, right? And this is a, this is a stag pretty staggering uh, graph to show somebody um, especially when we're out there talking to them about how they can become healthier. And so, you know, there were some statistics along with this that I'm going to share. And one of them is that um, receiving care for a heart attack will cause, well, it will cost you on average $20,246. And Lawrence has a story about that that falls in line with that. Um, but I want to share a few other things. The U.S. could save $175 billion in healthcare costs by having in half administrative expenses. Annually, 300,000 premature deaths in the US can be attributed to obesity. And out of all bankruptcies, 62.1% are caused by high medical bills. Two thirds of all bankruptcies are caused by high medical bills. By 2030, America will have about 122,000 unfilled posts for physicians. Global health care spending will cross the 10 trillion mark by 2022. In 2018, 3.7, it's now 4.1 trillion, was spent on health care related goods and services. 18% of the nation's gross domestic product in the US. So not only are we facing increased expenditures for healthcare, um, cost of care is increasing. We're going to have a shortage of physicians um, and we're spending, um, we are spending 40% of the world's total healthcare expenditures here in the US and our longevity is decreasing. Lawrence, you're muted. That was six years ago, 2018. So four years ago, 40% of the world um, uh, spending on healthcare. But let's just decide, dissect this a second. You know, we talk, we, you, were, you were saying that um, the $22,000 for, for, um, for um, heart, cardiovascular things. I went into the hospital at three in the morning because I thought I was having a heart attack. And I was there until seven. All they did was an EKG and they were going to observe. And my bill was $22,000 for four hours. How the hell do you justify that? When we talk about what you were just saying, 300,000 premature deaths in the US attributed to obesity. You know, it's a statistic, yes, but it's it's shocking. 
premature death to obesity? I mean, seriously, this is that in itself is is like it's like a a, a, a fist in the gut. Three hundred thousand people a year dying from obesity. So we look at that and we say, oh. Then we look at 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 sixty two percent of all bankruptcies in America caused by high medical bills. So my point about just these two points to start with is for me, when I see something like that, I think, what a massive problem. But then I think, hey, wait a minute, we're not helpless. There's a lot we can do. It's a lot we are doing. If we think about the scanner, we think about preventive medicine, we think about the fact that we're, we've, we've, we've got all of these 75 scientists working full time to give us what I call the passport to the future, which is science, technology, innovation. I mean, we're just coming out with Meta as of yesterday. That's one of the prob what's one of the of the um, contributions to trying to alleviate some of the major problems we've got with our health. When we start looking at how what what are we doing about it? We look at this obesity problem apart from just the eating. We've also got TR90. We've got products that work. And the problem, one of the issues we have is that we've got so many products that we, it's like a buffet. We, we don't realize just how fantastic a lot of the products are. So TR90, that is an amazing, amazing product can help towards obesity. And, and talking about that for a second, I, I went to my accountant day before yesterday and I had been there in, I think, October was the last time. And she's got two assistants, and they were both obese, obese. And anyway, I scanned them, and one was, I don't know, in the yellow, and the other one was, actually, one was in the high yellow, and the other one was in the ye low yellow. And I went the day before yesterday, and they were skinny. They were, they were half their size, and I said, whoa. Congratulations, what an amazing feat. They said, what are you doing? And they said, well, we've, it's just based on, on meat. And, and uh, you know, no carbs, no fruit, no vegetables, no nothing. And I thought, wow. And I scanned them. They were, one of them was 11,000 and the other one was 14,000. Now, at what, at what cost are we obsessed with losing weight, those of us who are, without understanding the implications of our health. This is what we're all about. We're about preventive medicine. We're about health. We're about health, helping people understand their lifestyle choices. And we've got something that's amazing. We've got all these products. We've got the science. We've got the technology. We've got the innovation. We've got everything. And here's a statistic which is shocking, shocking. Guys, all this stuff that I was talking about and Lawrence has, has um, brought up as well is from a CDC website. A lot of these statistics, I, and I dropped the link into the, to the chat. I want you guys to take some time to look at this today because what's interesting is they, not only do they, they give all these statistics, but then they kind of pat themselves on their back, on the back and say, you know, this is what we're doing to solve the problem, but the problem's getting worse. So are they really doing anything to solve the problem? Um, and I also dropped in a commentary by a physician on chronic disease in the United States. So there's a couple other things that I wanted to share with you. Um, this is taken directly from the CDC sub website. So chronic diseases in America, six in 10 adults in the US have a chronic disease. Six in 10, it's almost two thirds. Four in 10 have two or more chronic diseases. The leading causes of this 4.1 trillion in annual healthcare costs in the US is heart disease, cancer, chronic lung disease, stroke, Alzheimer's, diabetes, chronic kidney disease. And then the key lifestyle risks are number two is poor nutrition, right? And then, you know, tobacco use, lack of physical activity and excessive alcohol use, you know, no brainer there, right? 
But poor nutrition is the last thing that people think about. You know, and to Lawrence's point with these obese people in the office, great, they lost a lot of weight. That's going to help them become healthier, but they're not doing anything at a cellular. They look great. Yeah, they're going to be less risk for cardiovascular disease and hypertension, diabetes, all of those things. But then what are they doing to improve their health? And a meat-based diet isn't, isn't necessarily what you want to do. So in the United States, these are some fast facts from the CDC website. Three and four infants are not exclusively breastfed for six months. Nine in 10 Americans consume too much sodium. Pregnant women have low levels of iron and nearly 173 billion a year is spent on healthcare for obesity. Staggering numbers, right? But if you look at nutrition, and this is, a, this is an article right from the CDC website, um, the harmful effects of poor nutrition, overweight and obesity, not eating a healthy diet, heart disease and stroke, two of the leading causes of heart disease and stroke are high blood pressure and high blood cholesterol. Consuming too much sodium can, can increase those your risk for those. 70% um, of Americans eat and consume packaged, processed, store-bought, and restaurant foods that are high in sodium, high in fat, bad fat, type 2 diabetes, and cancer. These are all the effects of um, you know, poor nutrition. These are the conversations that we, if we're not having them on a daily basis with physicians, they're conversations that we should be having with uh, physicians on a daily basis, because they, they may know these statistics, but they may not know how to help their patients become healthier because they're, they're in a, you know, pharmaceutical based healthcare paradigm, you know, prescribe a drug, prescribe a drug. If they have a side effect, prescribe another drug, right? And then it becomes this cascading, uh, healthcare, uh, that's consumed by pharmaceutical drugs. I think what's important also is that we become numb. You know, a doctor, if you talk to the doctor about this, he says, yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. We're in, I know we're in, bad, we're in bad shape because he, he or she's become numb to this. But I think we've got, to, we've, got to, we've got to be emphatic about the fact that we can do something about it. I mean, in the U.S., 88 million, one in three have prediabetes. And more than eight out of 10 don't even know it. I mean, that, that is, that is a, a staggering statistic. You know, when we look at one of the um, PowerPoints that we have, we show the, the, the Twin Towers and we show three, you know, the Twin Towers going up and we say, wow, everybody remembers where they were, where they were, what they were doing, what time it was, everything. Why? Because 3,500 people died that one day. But then we look at the CDC statistics for 10 years later, and you're seeing that they're close to 2,000 people a day dying of cancer and 1,500 people a day dying from heart disease or vice versa, those two numbers. There's your 3,000, there's your twin towers every single day. So if we, if we stay in people's faces, with our own friends and our own circle of influence about the importance of nutrition, about the importance of being able to test, measure, and prove and see what we've got. A hundred million dollars investment in our scanner, that's a big deal. That's a huge deal. Why did we do it? Because we wanted to be able to test, measure, prove, and eventually guarantee what we've got. So. You know, I, I look at these statistics and I was, like I say, I was absolutely flabbergasted. But, oh boy, there's a huge opportunity for us to actually do something about it. Um, on, on the other PubMed.gov thing that, that, uh, that there is out there, there's a life expectancy, sorry, um, there's um, studies associated with oxidative stress, which we have. And on there, you've got studies on, 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 on any disease and next to it put antioxidants and see what the results are. You know, this is a bit outdated, but 9,000 studies on Alzheimer's. Who would have thought Alzheimer's? And yet, speak to Dr. Cady. He'll tell you why it, antioxidants are important for Alzheimer's, for cancer, for bone regeneration, 
cardiovascular, 68,000 studies. Cancer, 69,000 studies. Problem with eyes. You know, we start looking at all this stuff and we're, we're looking and we're saying, wow, look at that statistic. Yeah, well, we've got to do something about it. And we can. Uh, how do we shift <clears throat> the mindset of those in our society, not only close friends and family, uh, people in our neighborhood, whoever it may be, and physicians, how do we change their mindset about what we can do about this problem? Because it's only going to get worse. If we don't find a solution, which is prevention and have more people practicing prevention in the in the healthcare industry it's only going to get worse there's going to be more increased spending there's going to be more sick people um and and there's something that we can do about it and and that's prevention right and talking to more people about how we can prevent these diseases and as you saw you know the number one number two thing that we can do is nutrition increase our nutrition, eat more fruits and vegetables. Eat, you know, I was, I was also looking at an article about, you know, this whole meat, um, what is it called? The, uh, the diet craze, uh, where you just eat meat, the Atkins diet, you know, and, and there's so much literature out there saying that you should minimize your, your, um, having raw red meat in your diet, that it seems ridiculous that there's still people out there touting, you know, the Atkins diet. And, you know, it sounds to me like Lawrence, the people that you were talking about in your accounts office, you know, basically it was an Atkins type diet, you know, eating yeah. fruits and vegetables and just only, no carbs and only eating meat, you know? And so there, I think there's a lot of confusion out there from people about how to lose weight, how to lose it safely. Um, what kind of diet actually works long-term, what diet is sustainable and what diets are healthy. And, you know, and I think a lot of that is precipitated by how much information and how easy it is to get information to people nowadays uh, via the internet. You know, there's so much information out there and conflicting information that we have to really look and really dig and, and find that information that, that is actually truthful. Um, and then getting that, you know, to, to our physicians and to people that we care about that we want to help become healthier. Um, and, and, you know, a lot of people are going to look at you like a kook when you first start talking to them about nutrition, you know, and antioxidants and, and all of these things, because it's not in the forefront uh, of, of society in helping people to become healthy. You know, a lot of times people haven't heard, heard people talk about nutrition and helping prevent disease or antioxidants and helping to prevent disease. So it's a mindset shift and creating that mindset shift, mindset shift, not only in ourselves, but helping to create that mindset shift in people that we know or people that we can influence. You know, my, Dan, you're, I totally agree with you. The thing is also it's the, it's the information's there, but some, some people have a very efficient way or, or a more appealing way of putting out the information. For example, how come the Kardashians have got, I don't know, two billion people following them or a billion people because the Kardashians. I mean, seriously, what have they got to offer to the planet without being, you know, judgmental, of course, but I'm just saying, I mean, seriously, what are they offering? And yet they got, they got a billion people following. So it's, it's, it, and it's a question of how you market, how we market. And honestly, I, I just want to give a shout out to, to um, John Swart because it starts with what we do individually, lead by example. So John Swart takes his scanner every spare minute he's got in the weekend or whenever he's got, and he'll go and park himself and go and scan in a gym or he'll go and scan somewhere else, scan in, a, in an optometry place or a, or a chiropractor or whatever. And, and, it's, and it's there where you start one at a time, changing, changing his, his sphere of influence one at a time and oh by the way he gets a lot of ADRs John is is really really doing this thing from 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 the bottom up not from the top down as well so the way to figure it out is to is to just do it and 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 to not be afraid I mean for example I've I get stuck on watching the opinions on TV and you know, all these TV channels and I watch these opinions 
That's such a waste of time. And, and we, that's how we can start by going to the shopping centers around us and, and, and finding the, the, the healthcare professionals and finding anybody that's of any influence and even ourselves, you know, go there and start doing it. And eventually people will, will get to know you. I was at a chiropractor's place on, mon on Monday and um, he, he said, well, uh, but he's got a beautiful two-story building with every kind of equipment in there and all kinds of physicians working in there too. And I thought, wow. I said, that's fantastic. He said, you wouldn't believe it. He said, six years ago, I was actually going to the, to the um, flea markets and so on and trying to set up a little thing about chiropractic. And in six years, I said, well, what would you do? He said, I just stuck it out here and I did it constantly and, and the word got out and now look at it. So, you know, it's exciting times and I look at these statistics and I'm horrified. I'm saying, yay, what an opportunity for us to show everybody what we got. I, you know, I love that story about the chiropractor, you know, sticking it out, doing what he needed to do to succeed. So, you know, it's the same thing for us in this, in this business. I'm sure at one point or another, every single one of us has said, you know what, is, is, can I be successful in this? You know, I've had that thought, you know, and it's just a matter of sticking it out, staying true to what your beliefs are about nutrition, about the scanner, about the science of the company, about the products that we provide, and then figuring out a way to make it fun, not only have it be fun, but a way that we can actually influence those people around us or those people that we come into contact with. You know, it's, it's, it's doing the, what you need to do every single day. And if you're passionate about this, are you passionate? Why are you passionate about this? Are you passionate about this because you need the money? Are you passionate about this because you want to help people? Or are you passionate about this because we have products that we know we can help people, right? What, what's your passion in this? What's your why? Why are you doing this? And then, you know, if you have a specific why, why, you know, why you're doing this, then it's even harder for you to say, I can't make this work or I can't succeed in this because it's become part of your psyche, right? And, and so, you know, that's what John Schwartz has really done. You know, I see his posts on Facebook. I see, you know, I talk to Lawrence. Lawrence tells me what he's doing. And I'm just like, wow, this is a guy who is unwilling to fail. He's doing every single thing that he can do to be successful. And so we can all learn something from that. Right? Are you are you doing everything that you can in this business to succeed? You need to ask yourself that. You know, if you're questioning why you're involved in this business, if you're questioning why you're not succeeding in this business, if you're questioning, you know, your belief system, if you're questioning what you want and where you want to be in five years, say to yourself, "Am I doing everything that I can do to be successful in this business, in life, financially?" spiritually, whatever, whatever your needs and your goals are, are you doing everything that you can do? Dan, you just, I just wrote it down. You see, it, that's why I love every call. There's always a pearl of wisdom, unwilling to fail. What is the difference between unwilling to fail and willing to fail? Willing to fail is having no ambition. Oh, I'm willing to fail. But unwilling to fail, man, that's a big, big word, Dan. That's, I love that. I'm going to start using that with your, with your permission or not. <laughs> no, you're not allowed. <laughs> so, so, for example, I was just seeing here as well um, on this one in six pregnant women have iron levels that are too low. Are we talking to gynecologists? Are we talking to... You know, when we start talking about the scanner, we say, who, I don't know who to talk to. I don't know which one or which specialist, which is good, which is bad. If we only had, if we've got the scanner and we, we focus on one specialty, one, it doesn't matter, choose one. You know, we, we, we have that one specialty to choose from. You'll become expert at that, in that subject. So, you know, iron levels we've got products that can help pregnant women we've got pregnant for infants are extreme that are breastfed there's a big thing now that on a tv here 
if you if you have if, if you've breast if you've not if you've been using any kind of lactose products that are that either over the counter or in the shop or anything else and your child has any kind of whatever issue there's a big class action it becomes money again so i'm just saying 173 billion a year spent on health on healthcare and obesity man we've got the solutions we've got the answers we've got everything possible no excuses absolutely no excuses dan i uh, don't know if you you know, I, you know have any I'm, comment I'm, I'm, from anybody I'm going to bring it back to John Schwartz for a minute. So we do a we do a getting started call on our team every Tuesday from 7:15 to 8 o'clock, and I, I get on that call every single week and I listen to what John has to say because John Schwartz runs this call. And this week I'm listening to it and I'm like, man, people should be paying for this course because yes. it's so good. I literally put in the chat this week that it's a master class in, in talking to people about the scanner and the supplements and how to approach them and how to handle objections. It really is. I mean, he does such a fantastic job. And, and like I said, this guy is, John is all in, you know, he comes out every time to the, to the, he's on every call. He comes out to Utah every time because he says, I learned something every time I'm out there. You know, I've had people in the business who for, that have been in business for years and refuse to come to Utah. You know, I have people that say, I'm not going to get the scanner. I'm going to try and do it with the scanner. You're not all in. You know, if you're going to say, if you're going to say, I'm going to just see how it goes without the scanner, or I'm going to see how it goes without coming out to Utah, or I'm going to see how it goes and work one hour a week at this, you're not all in. The chances of you being successful are so slim and, and you're, you know, you're cheating. No, you're not cheating anybody else but yourself. I'd like to make a, one last comment about, about John. And that is the following. John started doing something and did nothing for a year. I mean, nothing. But I never lost faith in his potential. Because when you speak to someone, that's why I always say, who are you? How well do you know yourself or what do you want? When I spoke to John years ago, three or four years ago, I saw this guy had something, but he didn't engage. He had he was distracted, whatever, whatever. So I'm trying to say, be perseverant, be persistent. If you find, and when, not if, when you find, somebody that that you think oh my god this guy oh geez this guy's worth it stick to it be perseverant be persistent or have perseverance so anyway um i'm just excited about this shocking horrible news it's just so many opportunities for us do you want to open it up for questions, comments, Lawrence, real quick? Yeah. Does anybody have anything they'd like to add or, or, or anything like that? Please go ahead. This is Ron, if I can take a couple of seconds. You know, you, you talk about you know, the, the disease that we have and, and uh, the, some of the causes. You look at, at the number of medications that prescriptions that uh, are written every day and how many of those are causing death and, and disruption in people's lives. You'd be surprised to know the numbers. I don't have those exactly at my fingertips right now, but I've been doing a lot of reading about this, and it's 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 staggering. Uh, uh, you know, it's nothing but you know, here take another pill, here take another pill, and and you know, it's it's absolutely causing you know havoc in the whole industry. And you know, getting through and a second point, if I may, you know, getting through the the corporate structures where a lot of these doctors have have flocked to. Um, uh, because they get a, a free office or, or they get you know, a contract and now they're restricted on things that they can do. You try to walk into a, a, a daycare, I'm going to pick on daycare here locally, and, and try to see a physician who is a daycare uh, physician and oh, we can't do that. It's a corporate uh, contract situation. And, and so they, they can't even, uh, you know, they can look at it, but they can't do anything about having a scanner in their office. 
because it's a, a violation of the contract. You know, we need to figure out how we get past those things. 100% round. Uh, Lawrence and I talk about that, that almost weekly. Dan? Hi. Yes, Hi. Hi. Jim. Go ahead, Lawrence. Hey. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, um, this is uh, James Tears, and I'm an ophthalmologist. Um, I think, yes, we are spending a lot of money on um, medical care. When you hear, just a perspective, when you hear that, oh, my bill was $20,000, the amount of your bill is a funny number because most of the, the payments are restricted by the insurance contract. So, my, for example, my fees are set twice what Medicare pays, and I'm expecting to write off 50%. Uh, if you go to the hospital, they really jack it up, and they charge $20,000, and they'll collect $3,000. So, unfortunately, um, when people report things, they report what the bill is, as compared to the actual money that's being exchanged. So it's confusing. Well, it, it, yes. absolutely, it absolutely is confusing. And I, I forget, I talked to a doctor a couple of weeks ago and basically, you know, they were like, well, don't go to a major medical hospital because you are going to pay more by going there because their costs are much higher, <laughs> right? Um, and so, you know, you know, you may pay 3000, like you're saying, Dr. Tears, and, you know, if you, agree with me or don't agree with me, let me know. But at a major medical hospital, you are going to actually pay more. So if you're going to physicians at a, you know, at a big hospital system uh, versus somebody in private practice, you're, you're going to pay more. Yeah, That's but, the point is, he comes. but the point is that, that, that if you, if, if, the, if, the, if the bill is 20,000 and the hospital that does all the work gets three, where is the health care cost that is, that is actually, we're, we're looking at, you're right, totally skewed up numbers. Why is 17,000 going to the insurance company, for example? That's not health care. That's just banking. That's just another form of, of having a bank. Admin. Admin. Yeah. In, Italy, in Italy, it's free medical. I went there. It was totally free. Totally free, nothing, nothing, no, no copay, nothing. Just walk in and go and have a, whatever you need to go see the specialist, and you're, you're there. You're there. How can they do it? And how can their longevity be going up? And our longevity is going down because of the crap we eat here. I have hey. some insights on this, if, if oh, I good. may. Yeah. Um, w w there's no question we're digging our graves with knives and forks. There's no doubt about it. Um, I've done, and, and Carol and I have done quite a number of trade shows, and interestingly, we've had the experience of not only scanning people from other nutritional companies, but also, uh, I remember on a couple of occasions, we've had people bounce up to our booth, a uh, great body mass index, good color, looking terrific, everything else, and, and they say, hey, what are you doing here? Well, we're scanning. Well, we explain the whole thing. And they say, yeah, we'd love to scan. We say, what do you do? Well, we, we, we uh, have this uh, booth across the way. We're in the keto diet business. And they scan about 12 or 14,000. And the reason is very simple. When you, when you release these fat cells or you open them up and you're losing all this weight through this keto system, you aren't taking in things that are healthy. You're simply opening up the fat cells and causing an absolute cytokine storm in the body. So all of your antioxidants are eaten up by the toxins which those fat cells are releasing. And so the keto diet is inherently quite unhealthy. <clears throat> There's been a, um, I saw last week a study uh, between veganism and keto and keto lost a bit more weight um, but the veganism was much, much healthier from the cardiovascular standpoint. And, and let's not forget that Dr. Atkins of the Atkins diet fame died actually of a heart attack. It's kind of worth tucking in the back of your head. 
Now, yeah. my parents, to talking about the longevity thing that you raised at the beginning, Lawrence uh, and Dan, my parents lived in southern Spain for the last 40, 45 years of their lives. They both died in their 90s, my mother at 91, my father at 93. And I can tell you that um, the health care they both received was superb, and they didn't pay a penny for it. It was extraordinary. The rehab services were incredible, the speed of response, um, the, the, the forwardness uh, in terms of the, the medical advancedness of, of the treatment they received was excellent. And it was fascinating because when they first went there to Southern Spain, they lived in a little rural community on the coast of, of Southern Spain. And when they went shopping for food, they went down to the local corner vegetable stand by the roundabout on the highway where the vegetables that had been harvested up the mountain were sold from. If you wanted a chicken, there was a coop there with a whole bunch of live chickens and you picked your chicken and there was a terrible noise from the back of the, of the chicken stand and then out came this freshly killed, freshly dressed chicken. To tasted totally differently from the supermarket offering. But then came Aldi and the various other supermarkets that came into Southern Spain and the nature of the diet completely changed. It was no longer what we really understand as being the Mediterranean diet. It became the factory farmed supermarket sold diet. And that has led to a change in cardiovascular health and so on and so forth. It certainly isn't nearly as bad as it is in the United States, but it's not as good as it used to be. But longevity is still much higher and medical care is much better at a fraction of the cost. You know, if, if, if I can kind of uh, dovetail in on what you said, Martin, um, uh, my wife and I had an opportunity to live in England for a year and we partook in, in, in their uh, healthcare system. Uh, I was a, a med student at the time and it was very interesting, just like you were saying, you know, every Saturday they had the, the market down in the center, uh, town center. And you go down there and you get the fresh vegetables, the fresh meats. Um, oh, one night we thought we'd go out to dinner at a, a, a local pub. And it was actually a restaurant, but, but uh, uh, out, out in the boonies a little bit. And I, I had had pheasant in the past. So I, I wanted to choose pheasant for my dinner. Well, I took about three bites and went, oh, crunch. And it was actually the bullet was still in the pheasant, you know, <laughs> actually fresh, fresh killed, <laughs> you know, but, but our health over there was, was really, really good. And you hear all these horror stories about you know, socialized medicine and, and I'm a real proponent of, of socialized medicine because Me the, the costs are inherently less. Um, uh, the actual benefit is inherently better and, and you get so much, so much better outcome uh, just as, as that, a graph that we saw at the beginning. I think a lot of the opposition to socialized medicine, frankly, is political. Uh, and I think uh, we know that the lobbyists really are totally opposed to socialized medicine because that profit incentive for the insurance companies and the big hospital administrators simply vanishes. Absolutely. And that is to the benefit, in my view, that is to the significant benefit of the patient, uh, the national expenditure on health, uh, and and in so many other ways. Doctors don't earn as much, I will tell you that, but nonetheless, the whole system seems to be a great deal healthier despite what politicians would like you to believe. Absolutely, I, I agree 100%. Hey, um, may I just go back to John Schwartz real quick? No. Okay. We've talked about him enough today. And no, it was <laughs> real interesting. I mean, to get, to, to get such a, uh, a nice comment from you, Dan, says a lot. And all I would say is the reason John is probably so good at that presentation on Tuesday nights for getting started is he every day is talking every day, every day. And, and that's the way that you get good at presenting this program. Sorry about that. Go ahead. Yeah. No, no. No, I there's just, no doubt. I've seen his calendar just, pop up. I've seen his calendar pop up on some calls occasionally and his calendar is full every single day. Yeah. Full. Yeah. So, you know, he's working the business every single day. He's being consistent, you know, having those conversations, 
um, mastering his craft, altering his conversations based on what's working and what's not working. You know, he's constantly doing something a little bit, tweaking things a little bit differently. Right. You know, and the way he talks about it, the passion comes through, you know, and that's a huge part of this. Yeah. And, you know, and, and your passion can tend to uh, elevate if your business is doing well and you, your business does well by talking to everybody you can. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Any other questions, comments? All right. We're going to wrap it up. Uh, Lawrence, did you have something quick or do you want to wrap it up? I think he's on mute. He was driving, so yeah, he's driving. Uh, I'm he's here. Driving. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I was going to say one quick thing, and that is um, just talking about the quality of our food. And this is something that we can we, we need to talk to healthcare professionals about. And that's something that strengthens the scanner where it's a nutritional lie detector. When I lived in Colombia, I was on the board of directors of national planning, and we found that there were uh, and a, an abnormal amount of young girls of seven, eight with menstrual cycles, little girls of, of 12 starting <clears throat> to form facial hair and little boys forming breasts at like 12. How, why? And we found that it was because of the cheapest form of protein in Colombia was chicken. And it was from these big chicken farms and they have the egg layers and so on. And then the, the rotisserie chicken is the cheapest form of chicken. People eat that two or three times a week. And the chickens are in little cages, one on top of the other, fed hormones, lights are on 24 hours a day, so they don't know it's at night, and they're eating all day and, and all night with the hormones. And the kid that weighs 60 pounds has a, has a disproportional intake of all these hormones and, and um, 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 and also antibiotics because it's so disgusting in there that the chickens are, are injected with, inoculated with. So, you know, we look at all of these things and we bring a lot of the stuff on ourselves um, in, in the food industry. And the scanner is a nutritional lie detector. So we've got so much scope to talk about all these things. Anyway, thanks everybody for being on the call. Dan, thanks as usual. Thank you so much for, for your always invaluable help or valuable help <laughs> um and thanks everybody for being on the call and your comments as well thanks everybody right. and if you've got anything no thanks everybody have a great uh have a great weekend and we'll see everybody next friday uh if you don't have uh if you're not going to the forum but you have somebody that's going um please let us know and we're more than happy to help uh, accommodate them while they're there and uh the 20th i believe is the last day for sharing meta so we still have a few days, uh, four or five days left to, to work on that. Um, but uh, thanks for joining us again this morning, everybody. And we'll see everybody next week. Great call. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you, guys.